So welcome to session 17 of Talking Asperger's with Andrew. Um, it's good to have you all here and it's nice to see Ankush joining us from India. Uh, he's someone that I spoke to a, a week or two ago, so it's uh, nice to have him along as well as seeing uh, regulars now, Damien and Nigel. Good to welcome everyone. So what we're going to talk about today is something that I have quite a bit of experience about when I was a geologist working in the construction industry, but before I knew I had Asperger's syndrome. Um, and that is the situation where someone on the spectrum, I think, I think most people would tend to work better if they have only one boss. Certainly for someone on the spectrum who has Asperger's or autism, having conflicting instructions from different people is not going to work very well for them because what do they do? I, 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 I can think of many examples of three o'clock on a Friday afternoon, you've got a couple of hours left to finish off what you were doing. And suddenly someone comes up, one of your senior colleagues and say, I need you to do this for me for an hour. I've got this bid going out to be got to be got to be done today. And you sit there and you're thinking, well, that's all well and good. Congratulations. Happy for you. But what am I supposed to do? I've nearly finished this thing that I've been working on all week or two weeks or a month. Do I just stop what I'm doing and disappoint you ultimately because you're my you you are senior to me or do i tell you no i can't do it and you you're then going to be disappointed that i'm not flexible and i'm not a flexible employee and this happened time and time again from people who should have known better and should have resourced what they were doing now of course there is going to be times there are going to be occasions when something happens and something needs to be done that wasn't scheduled at the beginning of the week fully understand that fully get that but it's the way that it's done it should be a case of actually this thing that you've been working on all week we can we can let that slip till tuesday next week and we'll still be okay with the client so can you work with this on me and help me get this out today that's all it needs to be or the, so that the someone at a director level makes an executive decision so that the person on the spectrum knows exactly what it is they're supposed to be doing because you can't just drop something on someone. You, you know, it's very unlikely that if you said to someone, giving them four sheets of paper, do that for me, that they're going to know exactly what it is you want them to do. You, you know, they want you to do something, but is it clear? Is it clearly set out in these four sheets of paper what you want them to do? Or have you got to sit down with them for half an hour or an hour to be briefed on what it is they want you to do? And that takes up the time from the other tasks that you were doing. Um, occasionally, I spend quite a bit of time on Facebook looking for posts from various um, sites, various company sites that put up posts about irrational bosses, difficult employees and things like that. And, and one, one chap was telling us an, of an example where the boss got absolutely irate with him because he said no because he didn't want to do the, the, the extra thing that the boss suddenly decided was urgent and had to be done now, else the world was going to stop. And he said, no. And he looked at his boss quite clearly. This was a fabulous post. And he said, poor management on your part does not constitute an emergency on mine. <laughs> and I thought that was a wonderful way of putting the emphasis back on the boss to say, this is all well and good, but you know, you, you can't just create a situation where I've got to then decide which piece of work I do, which gets done and what doesn't. If you've had a bid that's needed to be in for Friday at five o'clock, then it's unlikely that at two o'clock on Friday, it was the first time you've heard about it. You've probably known about it for a few days and maybe a week or two. So how have you resourced that task within the, 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 the resource pool that you have of the staff that are working for you? So, I think that, that, that quote from that employee was an, uh, a poor management on your part does not constitute an emergency on mine. Now, I think that's a wonderful, a wonderful phrase. And I think all power to that employee for, for standing up for themselves and saying that. Um, I used to, as I work as a geologist and there would be principal, there'd be principals, there'd be technical directors, there'd be, then there'd be directors. So there, there's three or four levels of, 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 above you in the, in the chain of command. And the number of times someone from a different team, still in your department, but from a different team would say to you, I need you to do this now without 
any thought whatsoever about what you've been planning to do, what you're working on. And they then get the huff. They then call you being unreasonable. You're unreasonable because you're not doing this for me now. Well, I can't be, uh, how can I, how can I do this? If I want, if I'm supposed to do this for you, how can I do this other task that I've been scheduled to do for the whole week or the last two weeks? You know, I can only do one thing at once. However good I may be at what I do, I can only do one thing at once. So to ask me to do two things, you're basically saying, I don't care about what you've done all week. You're going to do this for me and get this done so that I can get this thing done and out on fr by Friday afternoon, five o'clock. So, so what do you do? You know, there, there needs to be a far more ordered and structured chain of command and procedure in place for dealing with sudden circumstances that require your input. I accept that that happens. I've seen it happen many, many times. It's that's not the issue. The issue is how do you manage that with the staff that you have? And you have to think about it before you suddenly have the, the flustering moment in your office or wherever you're working and think, I need someone to help me with this. I'll go and pick on Andrew or David or Susan, get them to do it for me, help me out with it. You know, Andrew, David and Susan aren't sitting at their desk, twiddling their thumbs going, Oh, I've got nothing to do for the next three hours. I hope someone gives me some work. You know, we're not in that situation. We, we, we just aren't because in, in, in teams and in projects and in, in, in employment, however, however your business is organized, there will be tasks that you have to do that have to be done within the day, tasks that have to be done within a week and tasks that have to be done on a monthly basis. We all understand that. We all, we all get that that's what happens that, that, wheels that the oils the cogs of the business so that invoices go out on time sales are made products are made money comes in pays the staff pays the office and all of those things we all we all understand and we all get that that needs to happen but there needs to be a thought process by the person who suddenly has this emergency piece of work how am i going to do this if i actually sat down for an hour could I fix this myself? And I think that could be the answer. They've just panicked and thought that person there can help me because I know they know they'll know what I need and they'll be able to help me and give it to me so that I can sort out my, my issue that I have to get out for five o'clock on Friday. The person who has Asperger's syndrome is going to be put in a very difficult position. We, tend to be very organized, uh, very logical, very ordered, very structured. And to suddenly have someone coming up the office, waving pieces of paper at you going, I need you to do this. I'm stuck. I need help. Or where is that file on the system? Or where can I find this? Or where can I find that? Most of the time, if that person actually thought about what they're asking and thought about how the systems are in place for how things are filed, how things are organized, what's in the filing cabinets, you know, are the drawers numbered? Is the, uh, is the filing cabinet numbered? So you've got filing cabinet one, draw one, draw two, draw three, draw four, or whatever it is. Does it have a label? Does it have a sticky label on it that says what it is? So that if someone comes into the department who doesn't know their way around too much, you, went, you, you can say, I know where it is. It's in filing cabinet one, draw two, and there'll be a tab on the, uh, the, on, the, on the file holder that will tell you that it's in there and you'll find what you want in there. If the person who's had this emergency crisis actually thinks about what it is they've asked, that's quite possible in some, some instances, maybe, maybe the majority of them, if they actually sat down and worked, fathomed out and understood how their system works, they might actually have the answer. But it's that sudden, ah, I need 10 CVs tonight to get this bid out, or I need a capability statement. Okay, Nigel, thanks. Um, or, or whatever it is. And so forethought and thinking about, not just thinking about what you have to do this the urgent piece of action, piece of work. But how, how am I going to convey that to the person that I want them to do? How are they going to 
accept this instruction? How are they? How am I going to um, impact what they're doing? Are they going to go? No problem, boss. I can deal with it. I can cope with it. The boss not realizing that that to, to do that they're going to drop what they've been doing all week. And so you know, Monday morning when there's someone asks, "Was that thing got out all right on on Friday?" No, it couldn't because the director asked me to do something for him at three o'clock on Friday. Someone else is going to have a very nasty shock on Monday morning when that activity, that report, that del deliverable item activity hasn't gone out the door, hasn't gone through the system and been approved and issued. They'll then get asked the question, well, why didn't you do it? My director told me I had to do something else that became more important. It became a priority. They didn't clear it with me. Oh, didn't they? Hmm. Sorry, I can't help you with that. He gave me a direct a, a direct piece of work to do. I told him I was busy, but he over he overruled my program for the week to get this thing done for him. What am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to run around and find you and tell you so that you can then have a conversation with with the director, or should the director have actually had a conversation with you beforehand and said, "I'm really sorry about this thing you've heard Andrew's been working on all week, but I need him to do this for me for today." And then you have the conversation, and then. You then come and see the person that you want to do that additional piece of work and say, I've spoken to the person that you're working for this week, and they've said it's OK for me to interrupt what you've been doing so that we can do this thing that is urgent for me for today. That's what needs to happen. You need to have the clear lines of communication. All of this comes down to communication, and it's one of the topics that keeps coming back week in, week out when I have when I do these sessions all comes down to communication and the, absolutely the worst thing you can do is to walk up to someone and say i don't care what you're working on i've got to get this out because that will make me look good or it's a bid and if we win this bid we've got fifty thousand pounds worth of fees for the next three months which is going to do everyone good that might be fantastic that might be brilliant but what about what about the client that you're serving with with the project that the the staff are working on at the moment do they not count anymore they don't count because you've got them, you've got the work, you, you're, you've been submitting invoices to the client. Oh, we can let this one slip. No, you can't let that one slip. That's not how you do it. That's not how to be professionally managing your teams. And so I'm going to ask both of you, Ankush and Damien, whether you've had experience of someone coming to you, usually at three or four o'clock on a Friday and saying, I've got to have this done today. Drop what you're doing. Yes, um, and especially if you have to, if you have a sort of a multiple layer of bosses, yes. um, who um, one will ask you to say, uh, will, for example, change a deadline, um, change the content or the aim of what you have been doing, uh, and um, obviously maybe bring the deadline forward, but they don't realize that uh, the work you're doing for another part of the company uh, is also, is, is very important. And if you didn't get that done, then there'll be consequences for the company. Um, but when you, you can easily, you can, you, sometimes you might ask, well, okay, what's the, what is the um, priority? And you might not always get a response. Someone, there might not be someone saying, you can leave that till Tuesday, because sometimes I know that the other job I can't leave, especially in the, the work that I do with plants, saying I have to um, prepare the fertilizer, I have to prepare um, plans for treatments for if we see aphid or something. Yes. Um, and I know that I have to do that. And if I don't do that, then there's going to be other consequences. And people might not be worried now, but next week they will be. But they're, they're, another person is asking you to do something else. So yes. you have to you have to be. Um, I find I, I try to combine the goals and um, report to both people with a list of what has to be done. I, I normally um, I'm known for sending out multiple Excel sheets with hours I need to do on this job and hours I'm going to spend on that job and a nice little color at the bottom that says there's a deficit of eight hours um, or or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. That's why I find it best easiest to communicate, um, but but that can be complicated, and you have to firstly you have to be strong. Yes, you uh, do. And see things in a sort of um, maybe slightly unsympathetic or or a rational manner. 
yes. try and quantify what you are able to do and then and stick by it. Yes. Um, it's not always easy though, because you get a lot of, um, there's a lot of, um, um, people get very upset very easily and um, it, like people can get emotive and. Yeah, the, 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 the problem I always found that when that happened is that the, 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 the person that you have been doing the work for originally will then behind your back say he didn't deliver that that work that he's been working on all week yes. for me and he's let me down and he's let the business down and it's you know yes. always uh, doing and, doing and, you know, and, and, yes, and you're just is, you're, you're just the poor person at the end of the food chain who's actually doing the work but can't do two things at once and they don't accept that and you know he said well actually the director came to me and told me to stop what i was doing and to do what he was doing what am i supposed to do am i supposed to say sorry mr director i'm not doing that i then have the director on my back going i'm not a team player i'm not not part of the team i'm not contributing i'm belligerent i'm arrogant all of these things and i've i've heard them all labeled at me and then then you get the second level of that is when they start having the meetings about programming and your name gets mentioned in the wrong circumstances and in the wrong circles. And there's this hush, there's this don't speak about Andrew because mm, Andrew let us down last time. Well, no, Andrew didn't let you down. Andrew did not let you down. Someone pulled rank and decided what I was doing was not relevant it was not significant enough and their work was priority and they're a director and i'm an employee you tell me what i'm supposed to have done you know that director should have should have spoken to my boss at the time and said sorry to disappoint you but i'm going to take andrew off you for the rest of the afternoon because i need him and if that creates a problem then the problem is mine it's not andrew's but that never happened that never happened. I always, because I would find out. Because you, you know what the the rumor circuit around around you know work is always like. Things don't stay private and quiet very long. You know, there's always the the, the, the they call it scuttlebutt in the in the forces, don't they? There's there's always the scuttlebutt going around. Who did what? Who did who didn't do what? And what was going on? And you then get a reputation for something that was entirely not your fault. I was wondering yeah. whether Ankush, whether you've had some experience of this. Uh, yes, I have had uh, same kind of experience, and uh, like I have got the work, I have already doing some work, and then all of a sudden there is a like a very sudden requirement, and I have to work on that. And now the client wants that requirement, and I'm not able to say no on the spot. Because I'm not sure how much time is that going to take. And I'm completely forget about the work that I'm currently doing. Yes. And once I'm done that work, once I'm, I've taken their requirement, I've done that work. The other work, I sometimes happens that I'm also forgot to mention them that I have that work and its consequences will be this if I pick up the work that you're giving me on the spot. Yeah. And that gets affected. So it happens many times that I have seen and the kind of thing that we generally do as a team in my current uh, workplace is that we already have a meeting every day. So I try to keep my priorities like uh, this is the work that I have that the same thing uh, Damien is doing that how much time it would take for him to do a certain piece of work. Uh, this is the same thing that I try to do. Okay, this will require this much time. If I'm getting all of a sudden any task. I could say yes or no, because I'm not sure at that moment, I will not have the idea. Mm. So I try to keep it a, a, as a table. Yeah. Uh, this is the time, work that I have. So I have to put that, keep that in my mind that, yeah, I should take it or not. Yeah. So these things happen. And the reason that you told, right. The people are blaming us, yes. blaming us. Like uh, that person didn't say no. He said, yes, he didn't deliver the earlier work. The other people are saying no, but we are not able to say no. I think the thing is that we are not able to put our points forward. Yes. Which is causing the bad reputation in the yes. companies and all. So that could be the issue. So we are, uh, what so we are getting like, uh, yeah. So we are not able to put our points clearly to them. Yeah. That is I one agree. of the thing. That I, is one of the things. I, I agree. Which I think, yes. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I remember one time I was absolutely stout out with work. Um, and I had a program and they kept giving me more work. And in the end, I did exactly what Damien did. I got a spreadsheet. I 
itemized all the tasks. I put the hours that I thought was needed to it, the number of days, number of hours, the, the, the team that I had working for me put, included all of them. And I, uh, and it was either a case of we all had to do 70 hour weeks or you had to put six weeks on to the end of the month for us to be able to do the work. And I was in a meeting with the senior managers and uh, to, to discuss this because my my work was was impacting on the bigger picture and and so everyone was 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 fighting for to have me on their team to, to, to do the piece of work that was relevant to them and so I, I was sitting in this in this room where various other people are there and my immediate boss came in saw this piece of paper with my spreadsheet and I, and he looked at me and and he said you can put that damn piece of paper away for a start and I said do you know what do it yourself. I screwed the piece of paper up, threw it at him and said, I'm going back to my office. When you've finished and you've decided what you want me to do, you come and tell me. But I can do 38 hours work in 38 hour week and I can't do any more. So you decide what you want me to do and I will do that. And I walked out the room and left. I was absolutely fuming, furious that I'd taken the time to divvy up the tasks that I'd been given and they were piling up on me to try and say we need some more resources or something's going to slip. And he just, it, his attitude was so just, it was a 1960s th desk thumping attitude of you will do as I say, I'm your boss. And how dare you have an opinion? And I just, I just lost it. I didn't, I didn't shout and swear back at him, but I said, I've had enough. Just screwed it up and threw it at him and said, do you know what? All of you decide that someone can come and tell me afterwards. And that's what I'll do. And I will do that to the best of my ability but when I've run out of week, I'm stopping and then I'm going home. And this happened to be a job that I was working in Manchester. So I had a, I, I would be up about half past three, four o'clock on a Monday morning, get up, have my bag packed the night before, drive down to Manchester. So I was at work by half past eight, quarter to nine, do a stay in digs during the week. Friday afternoon, it was a case of finish as, as, as early as I could squeeze it so that I could then drive back up the M6 back up to Glasgow and Friday afternoon on the M6 and the M74 was, was, was not a delight. It was, it was just nose to tail and traffic jams and accidents and oh, just hor horrific. And that, that was so, you know, wanting to get away at a reasonable time on a Friday, if I could get away at four o'clock on a Friday, I, I, I was quite good. If I could do it before then, it was great. But um, sometimes something would happen on site and I would be still out on site with arguing with the contractor at half past six, seven o'clock on a Friday evening. And that's just soul destroying when, when uh, you want to get home and you've got a four hour drive to get home. Um, so all of these things impact on, on how you do what you do and making changes to those things and, and people demanding, making demands on your time and, and priority and, I don't mind prioritizing. I'm quite happy for people to prioritize, but four different people who've given you things to do can't all will have you as priority one because it doesn't work. You know, something has to be priority one, something two, something three, and something four. And that has to be communicated to all of the different team members and all the, of the team managers that are issuing instructions and, and, and packages of work so that the poor employee or employees who's actually doing the work have got a chance of delivering it and doing it to a good standard uh, in in the right sort of time frame. But this uh, drop what you're doing, I've got something more important. Do, do, do you actually know what I'm doing and how important it is? You know, I've got a report that we've been working on for the last this project for two months. We get this report out today, Monday morning, you can invoice the client for Ten thousand pounds, fifteen thousand pounds in fees. That's not to be sniffed at, you know. And but if I don't get it out, we can't put an invoice for all of that because of two or three hours work that was taken away from you from me actually completing it on a Friday afternoon. So that ten or fifteen thousand pound invoice will get delayed a week. Now it may be that the company can stand that as a good bank balance. But you start doing that to too many clients too often and they're going to start saying, do you know what? You're not as reliable as you say you are and clients are going to start voting with their feet. You know, and going back to what Damien was saying, you, the work that you do with plants, is there's time critical elements to that, I would imagine, that 
that you will get a certain response with your plants after a day or after two days or after three days. And you can't, you can't ignore it and not go and monitor and test and check and see what you get. You can't say, I'll go back in at the end of the week and it'll be fine. You may have missed three or four critical uh, steps or observations in, in the, in the plant behavior that if you haven't been on board to monitor and, re and report and test and check, you don't know what, what stage you're at five days later. So I can completely understand how, how, time critical information is 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 important in what we do but sometimes our bosses don't understand that and that's that's the tricky part and that's 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 back to the communication that i that i said at the beginning mm -hmm. that we have to have better lines of communication that have to stand up they can't fall down just because a director or another team leader or another manager has decided there's a priority you know, you have to give your employees a chance to do the work that needs to be done so that the, 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 so the department, so that the company then meets their obligations with their clients. And it, it was a forever a eternal source of incredible frustration that, that you would have people just keeping lumping work onto you. And, and you know, we used to do weekly, weekly meetings and we'd have monthly programming meetings as well. So a weekly meeting, you would have 37 and a half hours of work to do for the week. That was actually a problem in itself because that gave you no flexibility for anything else happening that week. That may basically meant what basically meant do not speak to that person because they have got a week's worth of work. They, they, they cannot entertain doing anything else. But ideally what they would want is you'd want about 32 hours of a bookable time so that left you half to three quarters of a day in the event that something cropped up that that time was flexible and and if it didn't and it turned out that that wasn't the case you could bring forward work from the following week so that that person was fully engaged and wasn't sitting around doing nothing which was very very rare never never really happened so yeah so so communication is is the key to, to absolutely everything and and the person who has asperger's syndrome is going to be sitting there worried sick that they're not going to finish something for one of their managers because someone else has pulled rank and they will absolutely be i know i would get very frustrated want to lash out but you can't do and you have this situation where you've put someone in an impossible situation and you expect them to deal with it. You know, they, they've given no consideration for your feelings, um, your mental health, how you're going to get on and do this thing. And it just seems to be a never ending bombardment of demands and demands and demands without actually thinking, is this impacting on the health and the well being of the people that we're, that we have working for us? And, being on the spectrum like like I am, um, it was difficult. Uh, I didn't know I was on the spectrum then. I didn't know I had Asperger's, but I knew I was different. And so I didn't have the, the, the reason more solidly based to be able to challenge them in that. They just thought I was being difficult because, oh, surely you can squeeze a couple of hours in. Well, actually, no, you know, and, and you know, they're not going to pay you overtime. So why should you do it? Your contracted hours are 37 and a half a week. If you start putting in a bit of overtime, you're suddenly up to 40 hours. Then something else happens and then you're suddenly up to 42 hours or something like that. And uh, you end up putting in more time, much more time consistently, which is then becomes a resourcing issue for, 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 for the business. Rather than flogging the staff that you have, you then need to think about, do we need more resources? And, and that's, that's one of the things that, that these things are high, these highlight that, that the constant need to be aware of the resourcing of, of your staff. Um, I have to go. It's, it's I, okay, I, Damien, I, I understand. Go. It's, it's quite um, a coincidence, but I have to go now to a meeting to explain why I can't achieve two deadlines at the same time. <laughs> 
yeah, it's quite, I'm quite stressed about it because there's um, two people who both annoyed with me about um, the fact that I say that if you bring a deadline for today to they want it done like in now, I yeah. said my deadline was tomorrow. Yeah. And I had everything planned for tomorrow and yeah. to get that done now and plus something else. It's yep. a little bit stressful, yeah. so I'm feeling a yeah. little bit um, <laughs> stressful now. So, yeah, yeah. Well, go and, go, and de- go and de-stress yourself and sort yourself out. Yeah, yeah. Okay, tell, thank tell, you. tell them I think they need to manage their resources better. <laughs> yeah, I'll be, I'll be tough. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thanks, Thank Damien. Take care. Week. Okay. Next week. Bye-bye. Bye. So, um, yeah, so that, that was our topic today, Ankush. Is, is, is there anything you wanted to, to add to what you said earlier? Yeah, like the, those are the things that I see. Uh, the companies do not have enough resources and they try to overwork their yeah. resources. Yeah. And the one that's do, uh, I feel like the one, like what I would call uh, people like us will be someone like I would say, uh, it's easy to manipulate. People like us are easy to manipulate, yes. that I would say. Yes. So they tend to use them, overuse them. And that is what happens with us. Yes. So we, I think, need to have a clear plan that, uh, like, it's very important. Otherwise, it's easy to get manipulated. Yes. And, and you get burnout. If you do it for too long, yeah, yeah. you you will mm-hmm. get burnout. And the, you, then people are going to start to have time off, which puts, puts a bigger drain on the resources that are left. And the person doesn't feel well. They then they're then stressed and depressed. They may that might trigger other health issues that they might have, and all of a sudden you've got a, a downward spiral of the the mental health and the physical health of your employees is going down, while at the same time you're piling more and more onto them, uh, making more demands of them, and something will break. It will either be someone stands up and says, no, I'm not doing this. And you have a blazing row in, in the office or where you're, you're working and then you're called unreasonable. You're called volatile. You're not, yes, not a yes. team player, all of those things. When really the issue is the resourcing of the team. It may be that you need an additional resource or some of the work that the director is doing could be given to his secretary or his personal assistant that will free him up to do the more, technically challenging work that they do but then you know you then have to think about well does that does that knock on to his secretary does they have enough time all of these little things all of these little things add up they add up in very subtle ways and eventually it it will be the straw that breaks the camel's back it will be something innocuous that that someone has just had enough and they says they will say no i've had enough i'm not doing it and then they get labelled as a troublemaker, when when really you've been they've been the staff have been pushed too far, too hard, and too long, and you should actually be looking at employing more people or delegating to to other people some of the tasks that are being done, because if you're continually having people on a thirty-seven and a half hour week, doing forty hours, doing forty-two hours, taking only half an hour for lunch instead of an hour. You're going to get burnout, and you're going to have a you're going to have serious resourcing issues and health issues with your team, and that that should be avoided. So my my message to employers is, yeah, sometimes you've just got to bite the bullet and not be able to complete something, and you need to prioritize. And if that means that something has to slip, it's not the fault of the people doing the work. There needs to be a directorial decision that okay, I'm going to let that slip till next week because I really need this thing done today. That's fine. But don't put the stress of that situation on the employee because ultimately it will not work. And if they, if the employees really think that, that they're continually under this situation, they're going to leave. They will leave and they'll find somewhere else. And so that will cost that costs employers an awful lot of money. It costs them interview time. It costs them downtime. It will put bigger strain on the resources that you have. All of these things contribute to the well-being of the business and the health and well-being of your employees. And that is so important that, you know, as I, as I keep saying on, on my sessions, we are in the third decade of the 21st century. You know, we should be doing better at some of these things in resourcing, prioritizing, programming, and managing our staff. You know, we're not in the 1960s anymore. Let's 
behave as though we're in the third decade of the 21st century. We've got the technology there to help us. Let's use the technology. Let's have the systems in place. And let's be better at, at, at how we use our employees so that they want to keep coming back day in, day out, week in, week out. Yes, yes. I think that needs to be understand, understandable by uh, employers. Yeah, definitely. There are, yes. There yeah. are like so, certain hours that an uh, employee can put up and That's right. they'll put up the hours that they are paid for. That's right. <laughs> but it That's doesn't right. happen. No. It doesn't happen. No, it's it doesn't. Happens. No, it doesn't. Well, I've, we've got about a minute left on our session, so I'm going to close mm -hmm. the recording. So let's turn off the recording.